Hey everyone, it's Melissa with The M Word. If you've been wanting to know how we plan our science each year, go ahead and stick around. I am a secular homeschooling mom of three kiddos. I have a eight-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old, and we are doing second grade preschool and taught school, and we're in our fourth year of homeschooling. Today's video is hosted by Secular and Free Homeschool. When I plan science in our homeschool, I actually use a variety of sources. So my main source of science is going to be Building Blocks of Science. This comes in our Timber Doodle kit. And this is book two, but we'll be doing book three next year. I don't have it yet. And I like Building Blocks of Science. I believe they say they're neutral. If I'm wrong, just plop it in the bottom and the thing below. I completely understand that the difference between secular homeschool is or secular sources is that secular has no religious bias and I know that um, non-religious is just avoids the issue entirely. However, unless the curriculum specifically tells me which one they are, I have a hard time telling the difference. So I apologize in advance if I am not giving you that answer because I can't quite tell the difference. My biggest thing is I don't know. I have a lot of people who I know that believe in New Earth and I have a lot of people that I know that believe Old Earth and we we personally believe in Old Earth theory and I personally, I just I think that's a personal opinion and, and I don't think that there is anything wrong either way. I mean, what you believe is what you believe and that's perfectly fine. So I try, I don't know, that's a big tangent that you probably don't need. But when it comes to science, I personally try to find stuff that aligns with what we what we believe, which is um, which is old Earth, and I typically find things that touch on like the Big Bang theory and that touch on um, evolution. So if that isn't necessarily your thing, I probably don't have the greatest resources, but I also do use the Good and the Beautiful for my unit studies. So that is where things get sticky and weird. Um, and I, I honestly, we just did the Good and the Beautiful as paleontology unit. And I think I, I noticed the word God one time in the entire unit. So they basically just avoided the, I mean, they're a Christian company. Don't get me wrong. They are definitely a Christian company. But so far I've found that other than like specific units we don't use, a lot of the times it's really easy with the Good and the Beautiful science to just skip over the parts I don't like. And that's kind of how I make curriculum work for me. But like I said, we I personally first start by looking for secular and neutral subject. Timberdoodle marks their kits as non-religious, so I'm guessing this is mostly non-religious versus secular. And then Bookshark does say that they are secular, so whether they for sure are, I guess. They've never mentioned God or anything about it, so my guess is they are definitely secular. We do use Bookshark. This is Bookshark level A, and we have been loving this. This this is more your typical science, like your biology science. Your Right now my kids are going through, well, they went through ants. Um, they're currently in lesson 13. We are currently going over the rainforest. And prior, prior, wow, prior they've done things like um, reptiles, ants. They come with a ton of books, which is awesome. I think I use Bookshark as a way to not only teach my kids science, but to also find books for read-alouds, essentially. But like um, in a literature <laughs> study kind of way, um, because we do have our main science curriculum and that is Building Blocks of Science that we use. I will probably still use Building Blocks of Science next year, but I'm not for sure. I haven't bought anything yet. Um, and then the books, I really just, I like the books. They use really good books for Bookshark and that's what I like. So I'll probably go with Bookshark again next year, but I don't know for sure. So when I'm looking for science, I'm looking for something that is secular. I'm looking for something that is engaging for my kids. So like all of these books are super engaging and fun for my kids. Building Blocks of Science is super engaging for my kids. Like it is so much fun. It is colorful and engaging. I personally, if you've seen any of my past reviews, I do not like their laboratory notebook. I think it is a bit much. There's a few pictures, but like most of the pages look something like this. So we just use the study notebook instead. It comes as a PDF. I print it out. I can throw a 
thingy, a screenshot there, you can see that. And I just use things that my kids are engaging in. Whatever my kid would really like to see and learn. And these pages are super easy to read and super fast. Um, but I like to find subjects and resources that my kid really enjoys. So that is the bulk of our science. Now I'm also, I tend to do a lot of unit studies and my unit studies tend to be pretty science heavy as well. Um, so like right now we're doing paleontology. There are PDF files from The Good and the Beautiful and I print them and usually I pick anything my daughter wants to do. So unit study wise, she picks one, I pick one, dad picks one. Um, and then if there's more room, she picks some more or I pick some more. So she really wanted to learn about paleontology this year. Uh, animals of long ago, it's stuck in here. That's the unit that we did from Heron Books. I kind of just did it at the same time I was doing paleontology. We're basically done with paleontology. I put like a little clip in there. I printed their student journal. And like I said, they are definitely secular. Or, um, they are definitely religious. The company is religious. However, since I don't see a lot of religious content inside them, I don't mind using them. And I just skip over where it says God made the earth or God is beautiful or you are beautiful because of God or any of those mentions there. Um, I think I put it on my Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'll pop my Instagram handle. It's just the Amor by Melissa. I stuck up there the day that I noticed that God was mentioned in the paleontology unit. If it didn't work for me, I just would have stopped using it. But my daughter really wanted to learn about dinosaurs and I wasn't finding a resource I liked that was engaging and colorful enough. And that is the thing about the good and the beautiful. They tend to be very colorful, very engaging units, which is why I keep using them for my unit studies. I usually draw out my unit studies. We usually do like one or two units a week and it'll take me three or four weeks to get through a three or four months to get through a good and the beautiful units or a unit study. So I think they're designed to actually go a little faster than that. But, and I also, you don't need to do this much for your kids. One of these would be perfectly fine. Like one subject, book shark, or building blocks of science or two or three unit studies. You don't need to do it all. My kid just really likes school. All of them do. So I give them as much as I can. So when it came to the paleontology unit from The Good and the Beautiful, they do offer a bunch of books. I've never gotten their books because outside of when they do the free books during the summer because I know they're pretty heavy based religious because they are wrote by The Good and the Beautiful and I found it easier just to find my own sources. So like, this is one of our books. This is an Osborne um, Shine a Light book. And we have the DK um, Big Book of Dinosaurs. And then as I was going through my history book, the um, Osborne Encyclopedia of World History that we use with our History Quest History, I happened to notice that there were like the rise of reptiles in here and some stuff about dinosaurs. So I, of course, showed this to my kids. And then since I noticed that, I now pull this out a lot and double check that there's not anything in here that is relevant to our unit studies. When I'm looking for science in, for my family is finding something fun, something that I don't have to alter too much to avoid um, any religious information. My husband and I feel that our children should learn about as many other religions as they can and decide from themselves what they want to do or don't do. That's just our personal preference. But like I said, I really enjoy finding fun and exciting ways for them to learn science. We also get the knowledge crate boxes, which have tons of science information in them. I will show you the space one because that one hasn't been used yet. So this is our space, space knowledge crate. It has a salt moon and solar system like it just I like to find things that my kids find enjoyable I don't care for messes but I also know that my children learn best if they can do hands-on activities so I do my best to get a knowledge crate with every unit study we do so we had one for dinosaurs we have one for space um the more I can add to it the more hands-on and exciting it is for my kids and the better they do and that's kind of what I'll go do into the new year I have already been starting 
I've been starting my list here, um, my for sures, the things I think I might want to do. I've already went and talked to my daughter about some of the items that she wants to learn for unit studies. I wrote those down. I wrote down all the dates for the sales and stuff. Um, I have some information on what I think we might want to do or like some question marks, some things that we might not have time to do. Unless I find something better and more amazing, we usually stick with what works and what is fun for my kids because I don't want them to lose that level of learning regardless of whether or not it checks the perfect box in my mind. I would rather it check the box for my children and make sure that they keep learning and keep loving science and school in general. So if you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the playlist and I will talk to you next time.